that is here. Wonderful. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So excited to see you all here. Welcome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We are ready to have a wonderful conversation, heartwarming, connecting conversation with you all. Welcome to your Savvy Sisterhood Circle. We're here to talk about community connection and building our success squad and the importance of that. I'm Keyshawn Hughes. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Natalie Joby, and our two coaching clients. So we'll start with brief introductions of who we are, our organization's roles, anything we want to share. And I'd love for each of us to just share an intention that we'd like to set for this conversation today. Natalie, would you like to start us off? Okay, great. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Natalie Jobity, and I am the Brilliance and Baylor, a leadership coach, personal brand strategist, author, speaker, and creator. Um, and I, um, uh, sorry, I'm admitting somebody right now. And I, um, I'm all about helping, um, visionary heart centered leaders, aspiring leaders just to unveil the full gamut of their brilliance, because that's this one, that's my, my, my key word in everything I do in empowerment to have the undeniable impact that they're designed, of course they divinely designed to make in, on the planet, in their, in their, in their ethos, in their, in their domain, in their sphere, in their arenas, I say. And so, being able to collaborate with Kashan in this really special sacred space that we are creating with Savvy Sisterhood Circle is an honor and a privilege and a vision. And I am so excited to be here with her to do this. Okay, I'd like to introduce my coaching client, Elena Gibbs, former coaching client. Now we are in a mentor relationship dynamic and it's wonderful. Elena, would you like to open up and share some about you and what you intend for our conversation today? Certainly, Juan, thank you so much for this invitation. Looking forward to talking with the ladies on the call. I am Elena Gibbs Humphreys. I am an engagement and strategy specialist for Mainline Health, which is a um, healthcare system in northeast of Philadelphia, Philadelphia suburbs. I'm also a digital health um, program manager there. I do a lot of work in the DRENI space. And I was recently invited to be one of my system's DEI faculty team members this year. And as Keyshawn mentioned, I had the pleasure of being in group coaching with her and then entering into an engagement with her um, for personal coaching for the last um, 12 months. Yeah. And then in terms of intention for this, I would just ask everyone to um, continue to invest in yourself and hopefully you walk away from this with something positive. Well, that's good. Natalie, so would you I like didn't to... I didn't do my intention. I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> my intention is for it for this for this time together is for us to ignite the spark in the people that attend or listening to the replay to to know and feel led to to um to get the support and guidance they need wherever they need it. Mm, so good. Natalie, would you like to introduce Lisa? Sure thing. Uh so Lisa <laughs> Moving is a favorite client of mine we've been working together for a couple of years and she is an amazing phenomenal diva woman and I am so excited she participated it's, it's agreed to participate in our, our, our little circle today and Lisa please go ahead and talk thank you Natalie thank you Kishan nice to, um, as well Elena um, my name is Lisa Movin I am currently vice president of diversity equity in, and inclusion working for Turner Construction Company. We're a general contracting and CM firm that's based in New York, but we have about 44 offices nationwide and some international offices. I've been in the construction management industry for the past 22 and a half years. It's gonna be my 23rd anniversary. Um, I spent 19 of those years working in operational roles. So working on job sites and navigating to the challenges of being a woman in a male dominated industry um, for what was it 2020 I decided to make a shift felt like it was my time to give back to others and make sure that others have the opportunity to grow and develop so in my role as the vice president of diversity um, equity and inclusion I focus on the internal aspects so for all the employees that are currently within the company in terms of um, training talent management succession I actually need a few initiatives right now in terms of we have an inclusion action committee that sets um, programming for the company wide I have a group of diversity advocates that work locally to support the initiatives around that we have all the ERGs that are within the group and then uh, actually recently um, leading of the first ever Inclusion Leadership Academy focused on multicultural 
um, on the represented staff and created a development plan for them um, to be successful. Amazing. So powerful. So powerful. I'll, oh, your intention for today. What's your intention for our conversation? <laughs> I guess my intention is to, to essentially just be true to myself and hopefully inspire others to take the leap of faith in terms of understanding how this could benefit. And just if you have any doubts, alleviate any doubts and provide some support and um, encouragement for others. That's so good. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Bringing up the rear, I'm Keyshawn Hughes. I am a mom, wife, auntie, <laughs> all of those different roles. I came into the coaching sphere as a neuro leadership based coach because I, I found that neuroscience was a language that spanned across hum human consciousness. So if I could talk about the brain and the way it works, we can all find something connected in that. And connection is my purpose. I found that to be my purpose. I know that I'm off purpose when I'm feeling disconnected. And I know that I'm on purpose when I'm feeling a sense of connection. And so I love inclusive leadership. I established my organization, Neuro Savvy Leadership, to help build inclusive leaders. And we do that through one-to-one -one coaching, through consulting engagements, and then also through training and leadership development. So I had my own burnout experience back in about 20, toward, towards the end of 2017, going into 2018. And it completely shifted my, my way of thinking, my way of moving. I was a perfectionistic firstborn child of four <laughs> siblings who just would lead from here, from up here, from the, from the eyebrows up. I was not connected from the chin down, I would say, to my body, to my heart, to my spirit. And I learned how to do that through my burnout recovery. And now I share what I've learned and what I've gained through coaching leaders like Elena, through being in community with people like Natalie and Lisa. And I share it as often as I possibly can. So this is passionate for me. I'm enthusiastic. And my intention is to just share some of that light, share some of that enthusiasm for any light that shines from within us to then be passed on to you all so that you walk away feeling light in some way, form or fashion. So that's my intention. <laughs> love it. Love it. I'm like bubbling over. I'm so excited for this opportunity. I, I hope that you can feel that, feel it. Yeah, we do. Okay, good. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. We're going to move through our agenda. We just wanted to do that brief introduction. Um, any questions that you all have, feel free to type them in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to share more about our journeys, and we will as we go through this conversation. But I wanted to share an article, and there's leanin.org and McKinsey Institute. They do a study every year about the the status of women in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so I shared that with Elena and Natalie and Lisa beforehand, just pulling some stats from there, just to kind of have, have level set our conversation. Why do we need to come together and have these kinds of conversations? What are some of the trends that go across gender, but mostly affect women, women of color specifically, but then also just all women who are in corporate spaces, who are navigating their careers, who want to have good, healthy, safe careers and, and move up in ways that feel supportive and in alignment with their own purpose. So a couple of things that came up from that study, and I'll find the link and share it in the comments, but I'd love to get some conversation going about it. But the one, one thing that stood out to me is that women are more ambitious than ever now post-pandemic. Yeah. There, we, we've always been ambitious, I would say. Like I said, firstborn, high achieving, perfectionistic, overcoming perfectionism, um, <laughs> still overcoming <laughs> that, that quality within myself. I've always been ambitious, but I find myself even more so now post pandemic because there's so many different opportunities and the landscape is shifting. But I'm wondering about everyone here on the panel. How, do you, how does that resonate with you? Do you feel like you're more ambitious now? Do you feel like it's affected you recently over the last few years in your own professional journey? How does that speak to you? I'm curious. I can go first. Um, I wouldn't use the word ambitious. I would use the word more intentional about walking in alignment with what I know to be my purpose. And so it's like having that clarity of this is what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to elevate and empower women. There are many ways I do that. I'm so clear about that. There's there. My yeses are, are in full, strong alignment. And my no's are like, nope, not, not, not a fit, not a mix. So before I would say 
ambition would have been something that would be the word I would use to wh where I'm at today. It's not a word I, I feel even that I actually want to be that close to anymore. This is just me. Yeah. Yes. I loved it. Yeah. Share your truth, your authenticity. That's what we're here to do. Helena, Lisa, any? I'll weigh in, Keyshawn. I'll just say um, I always saw myself as someone who was very ambitious, mm -hmm. but I acknowledge that I think as Black women, we oftentimes outperform our peers. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm now in the place where you want that recognition and reward for continuing to outperform your peers. Um, but I certainly see myself as someone who's ambitious, but really just seeking the the acknowledgement and the recognition and reward that we have, you know, rightly earned. Yes. Yes, I can totally relate to that. I will say Black women are the demographic in the United States that are the most highly educated of all demographics. And we tend to, I find that when my friends get bored, they go and get a master's degree. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're signed up for another program, another certification. They're always learning, always growing. And But it doesn't line up when it comes to the pay, to the opportunities, to the roles. We tend to lag behind. And that was shown in this article that I just shared in the chat too, that we don't have the roles, the pay, the regard for, for ourselves in the workplace in alignment with how experienced and skilled and qualified we are. The data does show that. So I just want to chime in and say, relatable, I can relate. <laughs> Lisa? Lisa? For me, sorry, it just takes a while to find that mute button. But you know, it's interesting as you say that, I, I think from, from, from day one, I've always, decided to take the, the, the more challenging path. I knew, I think as graduated high school, I didn't want to take follow the more traditional role. So I decided to do architecture and it came into construction management. And even in, again, when you work in a male dominated industry, it's always an uphill climb, right? To, to succeed and I refused to quit despite the challenges and the obstacles. And I was determined to succeed. And, and like you said, I think, John, I have multiple degrees because at some point I'm like, you know what, it's time for something new. I need to learn something new. I'm going to go get a degree and I'm still continuing. Thank you, Natalie. She's like, slow down. Um, you don't need another degree. But I think for me, COVID was like almost an opportunity to stop and reset. Like, okay, here's an opportunity to choose something different or to take everything that punctuate everything I've done and take a different path and knowing that this was an opportunity to turn things around and also pursue something that was more connected to my heart. So it, it's like you said, not so much ambition, but definitely determined and committed to always be successful and following my path. And also um, breaking breaking down walls and breaking ceilings. Whoop, whoop. We always won't be here for that. Yes. yes, yes. I love the language that came across through that answering that question of being determined, committed, and intentional. If not ambitious, just aligning your intention with who you are and what you came here to do. What I feel like a lot of us were born and only we could do it the way that we do it. Nobody mm -hmm. else could do what we were born to do the way that we can. And just mm -hmm. having the supportive community network, that's what we're going to talk about the importance of that. There was one other stat that I wanted to mention from the article that I find to be resonant across the people that I coach is that there is a lack of leadership training, mentorship, and sponsorship support. So we have these brilliant women in the workforce with so much to share, so much to gain and to give and to receive, to be in reciprocity, reciprocal dynamics at work. But yet we look around for, we're, we're, we have, we're up for promotion, but there's no support to help us be successful once we're supported, once we're promoted and so on and so forth. So I'm just curious about the experiences each of us have had that track with that trend, what you're noticing, even in your peer groups, if not you, what, what resonates with that point for you? Sean, I weigh in, I would say for me, it's two things. One, I think often for us, we are not um, in connection with or associated with the folks who um, can green light our next promotion or our next mm -hmm. move, right? Yes. And or do they have the willingness to do so? Mm -hmm. um, I would say. Um, but I also think oftentimes as women were offered more development opportunities and mm. more opportunities to learn more, mm. not necessarily the opportunity to um, put our skill set and, you know, our strategies that we have learned into play in promotional areas and growth areas. So I think it's really, you know, connecting more with those folks that can green light us to move on to that next level 
and mm-hmm. ensuring that we're in spaces where that occurs. Um, and I think that's what may be missing. Yeah, and I want to just chime in there real quick, um, back to the whole notion of success squad, which I wrote about a whole chapter in my book. And I tell a story about my journey in, in, in my career where I did not have, definitely didn't have a sponsor of any kind of advocate and did not have a mentor. And when, so I think as a as an immigrant woman, black woman of color mm-hmm. in, in a white dominated space and literally navigating on my own and freaking everything out and advocating for myself all the time and thinking that's the way I have to do it. And now looking and knowing what I know, how many, many years later and realizing that I didn't even know I need to seek out mentorship, seek out because they don't come to, they don't just come to find you that you have to seek it out, especially as a, a black woman, one of color, you have to intentionally seek those things out, but you have to even know that it's a thing that you deserve and, and, and are worthy of. And so now one of my things, that, that's why it's a chapter in the book. It's like, to the point of, of the statistic, it's so true that with that support, oh my goodness. And it comes from different ways too. Like as coaches, Kishan and I know that's what we're doing for for you, for you, for you both that are here, but all the people that we work with, that is a, a different kind of support. But we all, in our journey navigating corporate corporate America, especially, um, need guided, this wise um, support and guidance and wisdom and 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 mirroring and all the things to yeah. help us because there are challenges and there are things we have to understand and questions we have to ask. And who do we ask those things of without those people in our lives that circle that community? that yes. we're trying to create here as, as a different, as an ally group, yes. we, it's, it's hard to win and it's hard to get to those levels of promotion. Sorry, I just had to go go there. No, apologies. Yes. Yes. I you said, yes. Natalie, I agree with you. And I think, I think we have to make the call as well. Some, we, I think as, uh, my Black women were trained to be nurturers and take care of others, right? And also, yes. but be strong, be stoic and manage or be quiet Ooh. and suffer in silence. And Ooh. I think we have to learn to break past that. That's what you, like you said, a success squad. Connect mm. with people and share with them, lean on them and really just start knocking on those because if you wait for things to happen, we'll never get it and we'll always be at the back end. So it's almost like we have to ring that bell and, and push and support each, each other because as we know what we're going through, that's why, again, for me, it's just, how do you support the junior staff coming up so they don't have to experience what we went through and they feel like they can look up and see that success or that mentorship that you spoke about that we we don't get. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing so many different themes coming forth from Elena. I'm hearing of just the importance of the way that human, I'm going to bring a neuroscience based perspective here, the way that human brains are designed to be biased naturally. It's where we, they're categorizing machines and we speak about, and I, a lot of us have heard about implicit bias. This is just done as a way of survival. No matter what shape or form your body shows up in, there's a similarity bias. You tend to look at people who look like you, who you can relate to, who are within community with you. That's why community is so important. And then you make decisions based off of that. Whether this, this, the decisions are ethical or not, whether or not they're inclusive or not, we make those snap decisions without thinking. And that's why it's so important to come together in community and share different perspectives hear from all voices so that we can then decide collectively what's the best move forward for this season, for this intention, for this strategy that we're setting within organizations, within teams, within within friendships, within within collective communities, within sisterhood, right? It's really important for us to do that. So there's those systemic, those internal biases, the the structural biases of societies and organizations. And then we have just the per- the interpersonal stuff. So we learn within the families that we grow up in. These are generational habits that are passed down once again for survival. Mm-hmm. We're all here. We're, we, we're thriving for the most part compared to previous generations of the past, but yet something still isn't quite right. It's not mm-hmm. fully realized within us. That's what I know for me keeps me going. That's what keeps me wanting to change, wanting to grow, wanting to learn and wanting to affect change and have an impact because mm-hmm. I'm trying to overcome strongholds that were passed down to me for my survival, yet I see opportunities for more for, for the generations beyond and even for myself. I want these opportunities for myself. Absolutely. I think we wouldn't be doing the kind of work we're doing because Sean, if we didn't believe in what you just said, like- mm-hmm. Like no, after what we've been through on you know, different journeys and in our careers, we're here to 
to be um, the, 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 the light yes. that we said earlier to guide those who are drawn to our, our brilliance, our brand and brilliance so that we can, because we know what we've been through. I, I know for me, it's like, if I can just help you know what I didn't know and understand and see, oh my God, that just fulfills me up because again, back to mentorship and guidance and, and all of that, like I, I, if I didn't have the journey I, I had and know how tough it was and, and then know if I had had that, how different would it have been? That's the yeah. other part too. Like, where would I have gone? What heights would I have reached if I did have that support in my career? Me powering it through on my own was the only way I knew, but was it but, but was it the best way? Absolutely not. And so to be that peer person guide, um, a champion for other women, um, to help them get that support or even be that support for them is everything. Because everything. you know what the different the different game changing. And so Back to the savvy sister. I'm sorry, I'm going off on yes, please connect it to the savvy sisterhood circle. The reason why we're here yes. to talk about the importance yes. of success squads. Yes. So here, here's why we even called it what we called it. Yeah. Savvy. Why do we use savvy? Because mm -hmm. Sean and I know that we so many of us are so smart, so brilliant, so talented, so expert. Um, yes. <laughs> in our areas of ex and areas of 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 of, of, of domain of experience, and yes. but yet. We are overqualified, usually, as we were saying earlier, and yet mm -hmm. undervalued. So mm -hmm. we are here saying we are smart. We deserve so much more. And because we have all it takes. So there's that part. We're smart, purpose-driven, high-achieving, usually women. It's why we call it sisterhood. Because mm -hmm. a sisterhood, we know that we want to be journeying alongside each other to, to give perspective shifting, to, yeah. to be a champion, to, to be to be that um mirror to be that um there's a word I'm kind of I can't get right now um to be that to celebrate to validate to to echo to you know all the things so sisterhood are like we're all holding hands we're on different journeys but we're holding hands going up a mountain because yeah. that's what it feels like sometimes but that's we're not it doing it alone so that's the sisterhood part and why is it a circle we choose yes. that circle so intentionally <laughs> because what we are creating here in Savvy Sisterhood Circle is a safe, sacred space for us to show up vulnerably, authentically, truly as we are, that we know we are seen, we acknowledge, we're celebrated, we're validated in this, in this container, and that we know that whatever the vision we have for the next, our next role, our next, our next opportunity, our next whatever, that this community would help us to bring that to reality. Absolutely. Savvy Sisterhood Circle is all that. Yes. Bravo. Yes. We put a lot of thought into this. And what, what leads me, I put some challenges that we hear from our clients. And I think we've spoken to some of those today. But for people who are first and onlys, mm. like me, um, and I even had a call with a, with a potential client last week who she also comes from a family of other siblings and she's the only one who took the to, took the journey into corporate others went into the military others went into retail and she's on this corporate journey solo and siloed right trying to figure it out because she is smart that's something she's heard throughout her life she loves to learn but sometimes a lot of times that's not enough mm -hmm. that's not enough it was within the family that we grew up in or the society, the neighborhood that we grew. It was enough to get us out of there. But once we come into these corporate spaces, being smart up here and not connected to anything down here is harmful. It's not helpful. And, and that's I'm speaking from my own personal experience. We have to have a holistic experience. That's why I love the circle as well. We have to like connect the dots fully rounded out individuals, humans, have a fully human realized experience. And what better way to do that than with people who are like-minded in their motivation? We might have different skill sets, different expertise. However, we, we share the same heart when it comes to wanting to help others, wanting to reach back and help others. We don't want to just get there and have our own crown for ourselves and not be able to reach back or reach, reach out to support and help others along the way. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. All of it. Mm -hmm. So any questions from the 
people who are here in attendance. Is anything coming up for you, Elena and Lisa, before we go into, we wanted to talk about your own journeys with coaching, the before and after, your experiences in groups and having your own success quads. But before that, is there anything else you wanted to share about challenges that we wanted to address as women, as Black women, women of color, however you want to share your um, your story that you feel like are important to address and important to put voice to in this space today? It's interesting because I look at all, I look at the challenges that you put in the chat and I'm like, I'm going to, okay, check, yeah. check, that's yeah. me, that's yeah. me. Oh my God, like, is this a template for, I for us? Like, what, what is this? <laughs> You know, yeah, and it's like, what? Mm -hmm. Why do we feel that way? I know Ooh, the imposter syndrome was there, like a lack of confidence. Like you said, highly educated, have the experience, but in my mind, not good enough. This is not going to because there's no validation. There's no one to motivate you, encourage you, make you feel like what you're doing is 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 doing well. Great, you just feel like I I think I'm doing well. I'm I I should I'm, I'm compare myself to my neighbor. I know I'm doing okay, so why am I not moving forward? You know, even like, again, as you said too, promotion, I got this promotion, excellent promotion, wasn't even expecting it, called me out of left field. And guess what? I felt even more like, oh crap, I don't deserve this. this is enough for me. Or how do I perform? I just feel like I couldn't live up to my expectations. Couldn't see internally what people were seeing externally. So coaching played a key role for me because I was lucky that I had, we were working Natalie before I even got into this um, vice president position. So we were transitioning and changing my mindset. And I think without that, I don't I don't know if I would have survived because there's through the, the dialogue, the encouragement, the motivation, the listening ear, the empathy, everything that comes with coaching, the understanding, that has helped me to shape, reshape who I am. Uh, the person I am today is not the person I was three years ago. And this because because it was an intentional journey. I, it would have never happened to this extent that that I am now. I come I, it's funny because I just recently had a challenge. And usually I'm like very internal. It bothers me. I stew on it. Uh, I feel upset about it. Today I laughed about it and I, I walked kept going. I'm wearing my red heels, my red lipstick, and my red sweat. I'm like, today's the my powerful day. I'm not, I'm not letting anything get to me. So, <laughs> but it all came from connection and conversation and opening up because if you keep, if you internalize it, it will get to you. It will, it will rot from the inside. It'll make you sick. It'll affect you in different ways. Some ways you can't even feel it. And it's only until you start releasing, purging, letting it go, talking about it, taking actions, then you start to feel better. You start to feel freer, and it's so important. So, it, to me, I'm 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 so happy that you're forming this circle. And I love the symbolic element about cir circle because it's infinity. It's endless. It's bound bound. So you keep going and going, and and I think it's a wonderful name. So I'm, I'm excited for what you guys are putting out there today. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, yes, and as we spoke to, we had a preparation for me this meeting yesterday, and I just want to bring that back into this conversation, validate as we navigate. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was poetry yesterday. So the importance of being validated as we're navigating these treacherous sometimes journeys. They're exciting too. They're fun. They're identity building and shifting as well. There's a lot of power and, and positivity to the, what we're doing in the workplace. It matters. Every day we show up being our best selves, whatever selves we bring, it matters. And so mm -hmm. to be validated in that, I'm thank you for aligning with all of these challenges. It, it, it does something, even though they're challenges, even though I don't want anybody to feel like a lack of confidence and imposter syndrome, but I know I felt it. And so to mm -hmm. hear you validate that you felt it too, VP, what? I mean, that is like validating. And that's what we do in sisterhood, in community, in trusted, safe, protected yeah. circles for each other and I want to say like you said bring bring yourselves and I want to say we want all of us to be able to bring our full yes. authentic selves to those workspaces because so many times we are shape-shifting constricting yes constricting and we want you to take up the most space that you feel like you need to take up to be authentically you to do and be the woman that you were designed to be in your arena and part of you being able to take up all the space that you're meant to is understanding 
having that, Lisa, you said, I think having that external perception of, of yourself validated by people you trust, people who have your back, people will give you objective feedback and say, yes, Lisa, you are killing it. Yes, Elena, you are amazing, phenomenal. And you know, it's like, it's not just words. It's somebody who cares, who is saying and uh, validating who you are. That is priceless. And when, with the more of that you have in your, in your orbit, the more you can show up strong and tall, uh, I not say, don't mean physically tall, but tall inside, from inside, that self-assurance that I am here, I'm doing great things. I don't need another degree. I don't need more, more, more uh, credits because I've got all the expertise. Now it's about doing the daggone thing and being that leader. Being. Being. Because here's what I always say, Lisa knows I've said it a hundred times. We get so caught up in the do, the do, the do, perform, perform. And the reason we're missing out some of the times on those promotional opportunities is because they're not seeing us as leaders. They're seeing us as doers. Yes. As the bees. We don't want to be the worker bee. And we we are, we we pass worker bee at a we certain are. Point, at a certain point. We, we are attracting those women who are past worker bee, and they want to be leaders or are already leaders. And to be a leader, you have to learn how to be fully yourself. That's the best leadership you can you can bring to the table. I think that aligns with something Elena said as well too, in terms of the tasks you get. It's almost like. Well, we get opportunities, but it's more about work intensive because you're such a worker bee, while the, the others get more um, forward. Visibility. Busy, and Visibility. And it made me think about when um, three years ago, four years ago during COVID, my manager came to me and said, hey, we want you to start tracking everything for COVID. My first thought was like, okay. Mm. One, okay, fine. I guess you, you, you trust me. But mm. then the other part of me was like, What's in it for me? Like, what do I get from yes. that? He yes. talked, I was like, I knew you would ask that question. I'm like, because this doesn't feel like it's the work that I need to do. I I complied at the end of the day, but I think I realized I had to challenge him, like saying, this is not, don't. I'm not just going to take it because you're offering. What am I going to get out of this? What's the benefit to me? How do I win? And I try to make the best out of it in that sense. So I made it to my advantage, but they see you as, They'll get it done. They'll put the work in. They'll work hard. She'll stay there late. She'll give up everything. Especially, I'm single. I have no, I'm not married. I have no children. So it's like, you know, she can make the sacrifice. And if you don't set those limits and boundaries, they'll take full advantage of that. And you'll oh never gosh. get the opportunity. Hey, Sean, I, wanna... I wanted to circle back to one thing that you mentioned um, that I thought was key in terms of sisterhood and that I kind of took away from our coaching experience. But it was learning to advocate for myself. And I say that to say, it, as I think Lisa mentioned, we are nurturers by nature, but we nurture other people. And I really think coming out of the sisterhood and connection through coaching was learning to nurture myself and to advocate for myself. I think oftentimes opportunities do come up and you have to know when to advocate for which ones are right for you. And which ones to say no to that, you know, I, I don't know, there is not necessarily above my pay grade, but the other folks who were doing this work were at a different level. And I know I'm capable and I certainly can lead in those spaces, but it's really advocating for what you deserve. And so I think that has come out of a lot of the engagement um, from coaching and in sisterhood. I love that she brought, I know, we, we, we know, because we, both. <laughs> like uh, self-advocacy is like we are lit by yeah. that and i think it's it's one of our pillars in our program and it i know is. we didn't have that part yet like yeah we have like a few pillars so it's a it's a, sorry like, can we go there Kishan? please do please do um, yeah so it's it's a it's a 12-week journey um uh, with us uh three months and yeah. we, so we meet live every two weeks starting january 25th yeah. and it's a two-hour Kumbaya, let's yeah. put it that way, with some knowledge sharing from Kashan and I, some um, strategic, you know, pointers, but also opening up the space for, for the women in, in the community to share and talk about. And one of those, so, so here are the, uh, the, the six areas. The first one would be week one is how to embody Sorry, sorry. Oh, we got to, uh, how to embody that leadership posture that will get you to the role, the, the 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 level, whatever your goal is. What is the leadership posture that you need to embody, and how do you do that? So that's the first the first week. The second week is oh my god, everybody will relate to this. 
overcoming perfectionism because yes. raise your hand who is a recovering or still well, with right. perfectionists, right? <laughs> um, we all have struggled with that. But I don't know any woman who hasn't had that at some point in her life. So mm -hmm. how do we overcome perfectionism in a healthy way and, mm -hmm. and to, 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 to relieve ourselves from leading into burnout, which Kishan talks about her story. I have had, I, I have a different story, but definitely all kind of issues with health, mentally, physically, because I didn't know how to properly mind my boundaries along the way. The third week, we wanted to segue how yeah. to establish healthy boundaries. Oh my God, like boundaries yeah. is a whole TED talk and then some, because there's so many aspects to that and how it, when we know the boundaries to set, the things that Elena, you mentioned, what to say yes to, what to say no to, where does that come from? Knowing your boundaries and also knowing your values in terms of I stand by this is this who I am that is not that is not aligned with my value that's a no so going into that is the is the, is the third week the fourth week is about our autonomy autonomy and our agency as leaders or aspiring leaders because a lot of times when we are in this navigating this corporate arena we don't realize the power we have within us to get some things. The, the, the desires that we long for to make them happen. We have agency, which is we have the ability, capacity to, to be more, to do more, to ask for what we need back to self-advocacy. So in understanding how to use our innate agency and autonomy, which is our flexibility, our, our agility, all those things in service to our goal professionally is the week, week number four. Week number five, and I got to calm down even just saying this because my, <laughs> I'm, all like, I'm all like in my thing right now, work-life integration, because integration. let's face it, whom, how many of us are so used to and un uncomfortable with go, 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 do, 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 achieve, 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 we're high achievers, we're savvy, but we're not great at, okay, what do I need to calm down, to, to anchor myself, to ground myself, take time off to feed and nourish my being so that when I show up, I'm fully shining brightly because I have taken care of my inner self and my inner needs, right? So that work-life integration is a big aspect. No matter what your role, your ambition, your your sector, understanding how and, and in the community, being accountable to what does that look like for me and what's realistic, that is a whole thing in itself. And then the last week, week number six, is about how to integrate everything you have learned in that circle experience and make it a reality between each of the two, so every every session is is two weeks uh, two weeks apart, and within mm -hmm. those two weeks, you get paired with an accountability partner to keep you, and we'll have give you a questions to ask each other in that time to keep yourselves again in the community, in that sisterhood, but also learning and growing along the way. I mean, Kashan, please add some things here too. If yes, you know, like, the benefits. I've been in group coaching experiences, Elena. I think we all have, and we've talked about that. How we've all each been in in our own different types of success, success squads and containers, and the type of learning and support you get in the healthy, well-run ones. There's nothing like it. It's unmatched. It's there. There's accountability. Yes. But then also the type of learning that happens as you see yourself in someone else, it's exponential type of learning. And so it's the type of support, development, orientation that happens within community that happens more quickly than it would potentially sometimes with what you do on your own one-to-one. -one. So I just wanted to share that as well, just the the exponential results and rewards of coming together, like I said, with like intention, shared intention, shared heart, different areas of brilliance, but coming together to move quickly together. Because people who come into our sphere, we I put the challenges, they know they're undervalued and underpaid. They know that they need to self-advocate, but they are afraid. I, I've had, I've coached so many people who have stress responses, whether it's not being like squeaking. They can't even speak. It's like a squeak that comes out when they're in the room with people who are higher up in the in the food chain, on the hierarchy, within, when they're in executive spaces, spaces with higher ranking individuals. That's not how they are normally. They know themselves. They know the information. But something happens in that room where they can't show up as their full authentic selves. They can't show up in their full brilliance. So the power of coaching with us, with Natalie and I, is we go beneath the surface. 
Yes. And we customize supportive methods for you. So as you're sharing this in the group, it's helping others. We're learning together as a group. I'm learning. Natalie's learning. We're having a group learning experience. It's bi-directional. And we're customizing methods for you based on our years of leadership in corporate spaces and our years now coaching through a pandemic. I mean, the I can't even say all of the skills and the qualities and magic that now comes through me because we've coached leaders through this very challenging time for humanity. And yeah. we want to bring it all into this container. I, I love everything there. And I want to add with like, so when we don't have community and support, and we're in those spaces where we want, a, a, let's say we're advocating for a new role, or not advocating, we're desiring a new role, we, or we're up for promotion. One of the saboteurs, and a lot of times we are our, our, our worst saboteur, is we start overthinking and second guessing. Yeah. Oh my God, I raise your hand. Who doesn't overthink and second guess like, am I good enough? Am I qualified enough? Um, uh, uh, yeah, the I not should, enoughness I should, of it all. Yeah, yeah, the not enoughness and like, and like wondering like, Oh, I should just take what they give me because, and I can't say I want this or that or ask for this support or that support. So many people I've worked with, I mean, the imposter syndrome, the mm. insecurity, the back and forth of that's when we in our own heads and don't have objective feedback or peer guidance, we, we, we get trapped and just stuck there. And mm -hmm. so with this community have here again, hearing other people voice their, their opinions and their perspectives, and then uh, being able to show up visibly and vulnerably in this container to say what needs to be said so somebody else can hear or give you feedback or you can share what you've learned again gold just gold priceless stuff that until you've experienced it you don't even recognize the value that you can you have without it right absolutely I'd love to take some time to now hear from Elena and Lisa about your unique coaching experiences with each of us if you could just you've already shared so much about how you went through this journey, where you were, different challenges you were able to overcome. But I'm just curious if you could just talk about what made coaching with each of us unique specifically, and then your own success squad experiences. So I believe that for me, my coach is a part of my success squad. So I don't think any <laughs> good, good success squad has is, is lacking of a coach or a mentor or sponsor, someone with that type of wisdom and insight that can pull from lots of different aspects of life that then are channeled for me to move forward. So that's me personally. But I'm curious to hear both of you express what your experience was coaching with each of us specifically, what were the unique aspects, and then what your success squad looks like. Sure. Um, I'll go first, Lisa, if that's okay. Um, my coaching experience with Keyshawn, I would say was, um, and I, I've, I've said this before, but it was transformational for me um, because I am really a tactical person working, starting out as a project manager and a program manager. We think tactically. We're looking at the task and we're breaking things down. One of the unique things that I found in coaching with Keyshawn was she helped me to tap into the emotional side of the why behind why I was making the decisions or the choices, not just um, professionally, but also personally. For me, I felt like she was uh, helped me to go deeper in thought about why I was doing certain things. It was areas that I hadn't yet even thought to explore. You know, it's really what's the next position? Where's the next level? But it gave me an internal look at myself to be able to say, where am I looking to go? And why do I feel the need to make those decisions? And once I had a better understanding of that, that cleared a lot up. And I think that was in week one or two of our coaching sessions. So it framed sort of where I needed to go um, moving forward. And then I will also say, I think that the neuro-based piece that I wasn't aware of before engaging, that was unique for me. It was refreshing, but a lot of what I learned in our sessions, I would say were freeing. It allowed me to recognize and realize that the things I experienced in the day-to-day, -day, in corporate, kind of as Lisa mentioned, I came up through the ranks of healthcare IT. And so it's a predominantly male-oriented, white male-oriented um, industry. I was one of two Black women who worked. Um, I started out in kind of customer support as an analyst. Um, but I, I had a kind of creative journey where I returned to corporate. 
um, and was an entrepreneur for some time. So I took that first level entry level position to just get my foot back in. And it was really, how do you work your way up when you know you have all the experience, all of the education and to kind of level up with folks who don't know you. Um, but on my end, I think, um, working with a coach helped me to figure out what's that next level path that's right for me. And it didn't have to be what it looked like for my counterparts or my peers. Um, I would also say um, it would be the safe space that I felt with Keyshawn. I knew that it was kind of non-judgmental and kind of in our engagement sessions, I didn't feel like I was being judged for the things that I sort of faced or the things we discussed. So that was that was comforting. I'm not sure if I would get that kind of in other coaching circles. Um, and then I think you sort of asked kind of just moving ahead, it really was what I came from, the value of sisterhood and kind of community. And some of those I created my own personal circles, but out of some engagements, I've connected with other accountability partners where we connect on a regular basis. And for me, that is kind of that positive reinforcement that allows you to continue showing up at work to validate the challenges that you're facing and kind of just to get that strength muscle of this is something you can do and you're doing it. So those would be my ideas around sisterhood and community. Thank you, Elena. My heart is full. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> no, that was awesome. And I, I can concur with that. I want to first say I got connected to Natalie too through a member of my success squad, somebody who I've been connected to from day almost day one working with this company. And it's interesting, never thought about it, but like that. But we've been navigating this corporate world together, really behind the scenes, kind of giving each other guidance and support. And so on the outside, no one knew it, but we kind of really navigated it. And we're in different companies, but she she realized that this is something I needed and connected me with Natalie. And I will tell you from the first call, was it the exploration call? I don't know what you call that. It was like, it was more than expected. It was longer than expected. And then I'm like, this lady gets me. Like who? Like from from jump, I was like, felt such a strong connection and how we just talked and like everything felt like this is the woman who I knew I could connect with. Um, so through that journey, and it's been quite a journey, we've come a long way. And I think Natalie has been her approach to to this process just shifted my thinking. Natalie, I love you. You allow me to think, accept who I am, and also appreciate what I bring to the table. I think I was lacking that. I had no, I knew I, I had confidence, but really, I didn't think I had any skills. I couldn't, I couldn't identify my strengths. If you ask me what my strengths were, oh, I'm hardworking, I'm detail oriented, all those crappy nonsense that don't that anybody can write on. And I, I just, I couldn't, and I felt like, what are my skill sets? What do I bring? I couldn't figure that out. And we worked through, worked through that. And I think identified really what makes me unique, what makes me special. And through that understanding, clarity came. And now we can now navigate it through almost just like figuring out the obstacles, working through the process. And I think also, with, with Natalie, what you did, you validated a lot of what I said. Like I gave you some of my thoughts, my uh, my opinions, and you never said that's in your head. You you agreed with me and you made me feel like I'm not crazy. What I'm saying is true. Now, how do we deal with it? And it just, I, I felt like I had a safe space with which to unload. Um, and it's like, it's a, it's a, it sometimes feels like it's a little bit of therapy, but I know you, we hate that. But I feel so much lighter, looser, clearer coming out from those conversations. So to me, I, I, the sisters, and then that's the sister who's so my I have a therapist that's also part of that. And I also a few friends who I know because they help me in different ways. And it's like your board of directors, right? Your, your success squad, your board of directors, you can succeed without having a, a treasurer and a, a finance, a, 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 a operations manager. Everyone has a role. But all of that helps to complete the whole. And I that's why I really appreciate um on that. And I and I think also because you're so frank and frank and direct. Like you you cut through my my nonsense and just like, okay, hold on, stop. Let's go back to and stay focused. 
I know that can happen, but I appreciate all of that that you brought to me and just helping me achieve my goals and feel more and more successful every day and even feel more powerful. Like I think I feel the most powerful that I've had in the past three and a half years and it's amazing yes i was like celebrate i mean seriously lisa is a different version of herself it's like amazing if we had a before and after you guys will visibly see it yeah i know it's true it's true yeah. that's so true it's the best just as a coach to to go through these transformations with our clients for me as an empath <laughs> and just someone who just I just love I love people I love women I just love what I do there is nothing like it it is priceless it is a priceless experience so it's the best thank you for sharing that we did not pay these women to say this they showed up not. free okay <laughs> have to say that this yeah, so they good. Up, I love it. They showed up to just to support us in this to creating this yes. circle. Yes, thank That's you. What it is. Yeah, we want to model what we're putting in a package. We want it to model it. We want it to just share it organically. This is how we move. This is how we think and flow. This is what we believe, and these are our actions that are in alignment with what we believe and who we are, how we be, who we be. This is it. Yes, this is what you would receive. This and I want to just say, like, because Sean and I, all, we didn't share this today, but we have been doing, we've been connecting for a whole year, yes. doing LinkedIn Lives on a whole yes. bunch of topics on our, like, so what we've learned about how we we vibe well and what we're going to bring to this circle is we are authentic. We are very, um, we're very real about our own journeys. We have fun. We get excited. Very, you can see, we get so excited. <laughs> we light each other up. And yes. so also bring it all, and we're both heart-centered women. And I mean, I, I'm also an empath. I mean, just very heart-centered, but in a very healthy way, right? We've gone through yes. the thing and we've, we've, we've done yeah, the work. <laughs> Yes, we've done the work and we, and we yes. know we're still growing. So we're not here like, we're the experts. We yeah. have wisdom and knowledge to share, absolutely. But we never come in as like, we're going to yeah. tell you what to do. We are yeah. all, we are, we are going to lead this, but we're also part of the <laughs> container. We're all, like you said, we're yeah. part of the, the whole echo chamber here and so we our personality what you see today is is literally a taste of what you will get in that savvy sister circle and we are very organic also even though we don't have a structure we very much go where we are led in terms of whatever comes up with the woman who joined and what what they bring and what their challenges are we will speak to those things and so if we have to go off our script we're very happy to do that in service to the people who are we're serving. So yes, we have a structure, but we go with the flow as well. That's right. That's right. I want I'll to add something too, if you yes, don't mind. Please, please. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Validating your community circle. It's, I've seen it in play. One of the programs I'm leading, we have this program of um, individuals in the office who are in, in the company who are connected through different coaching individually. They came together recently and it was through a training session. But at some point it evolved into one person opened up about a situation. And mm -hmm. it was amazing, like a, a bowling pin falling down, a domino effect. Mm -hmm. Advice started being thrown out, stories started being shared, connection. Oh my God, this happened to me. What about this? And now as I'm going through the rounds, connecting with each of them. I asked them, what was the best part of this program? And they all mentioned that three days that we spent together and that conversation about sharing. So mm -hmm. I feel I they got so much because every time somebody spoke about an issue, it validated for them that you're mm -hmm. not alone. And then they got advice with how to deal with it. And they were able to also give advice and share. So everyone had a role to play. Everyone fit into a piece of the puzzle. But that I think has been the most, the group coaching session, the community sharing was the most impactful journey of it because it was real life situations being delved in and talked about and discussed in a facilitated um, scenario so and, it, and safe and safe space that and very them. safe and mm -hmm. also what was con the break connection they were all kind of looked alike in terms of representation so they yeah. were it, it it felt real it felt true like you you get what i'm going through you know how i feel so mm -hmm. i understand what you're saying and i can appreciate it so i i love what you ladies are doing and i think is very much needed to support us as we go through this i love it thank you for sharing that I think in neuroscience terms, and I don't want to get so deep because I'm the one who loves neuroscience. Not everybody loves it. But what you're saying aligns with 
things like coherence. So there are things that happen within our brain where they actually resonate on the same frequency when we have these kinds of experiences, which makes it, like I said, makes learning faster, deeper, helps us to remember things better. It helps us to progress faster. There's something also called co-regulation. When we come together, we can all be in the same mood. And what you want is you want to come into a joyful container. You want, if, especially if you've had a stressful day or a stressful moment, you want to be able to know and guarantee that when I come into this space, I'll feel better afterwards. That's the best compliment people give me. I feel better now. I feel relaxed. I feel calm. You have a way. This is what we do as coaches. We have to co-regulate. We have to regulate ourselves. And we're very intentional about that because we want people to leave every session, every conversation better than when they came to it. And when you do that, you are creating a habit. You're literally creating neural pathways. So when you leave this container, you're not going to always be with us. Your brain will now know when you go into other communities, in other circles, it will know when there's coherence there. It will automatically know how to create it without you even thinking about it. It will become habitual and automated for you. So we want to model it in this community so you can then go out and spread that with others and bring that to others. That's the special sauce. That's the leadership. That's mm -hmm. the authenticity. That's what people, that's what builds a brand. That's what builds um, your, your capacity for leadership in a way where you just have that special something, that it factor where people want to bring you into what they're doing. They trust mm -hmm. you instantly. Mm -hmm. They don't know why, but it happens when you're learned, when you learn how to do it and it's cultivated into these safe communities, like the ones we're establishing, like the one we are establishing with Savvy Sisterhood Circle. And I would just add that the evidence what, you're talking, about, what yes. you're talking about, what they, what people will feel even though they know what, what it is, is your energetic change. Yes. When you have coherence, when you're aligned, when you have clarity, when you have confidence, your energetics, your vibe change and shift and yes. other people see people see you differently. They experience you differently. And you will start to be like, oh, wow. oh wow. You, Lisa knows what I'm talking about. Like yeah. you will be seen and different and you will sort of feel in yourself. I just feel different now. I'm not as, as anxious. I'm not as nervous. I can be the thing she has done, like speaking in front of large groups three years ago, she would have never dreamed. I mean, just like from that place, from that space, the agency you have and the authority comes shining through and there's no more barriers of like, I can't, I won't, I can't. you're able to do these things and grow and evolve and make your impact. That's it. Elena, did you want to say something? I see you. I was not. just going to chime in with Natalie to say, and I think Lisa mentioned this as well, after the sessions, it really allowed me to um, realize the value that I already possess. Yes. And I was able to carry that into other spaces yes. because then I could see myself as the leader and, you know, the others already saw it was kind of acknowledgement for me that this is value I already had. And now it just follows you where you are. You walk different, you talk different, yes. you present different. And so um, that was one of the greatest takeaways for me. It's amazing. It's like the intention I shared in the beginning when that light lights up in you and then it passes on, it's shared. We're that candle that lights other candles. It It is, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So we, we have two more on. minutes. Sorry, I want to just make sure, yeah. Yes, I want to share just this little slide about the investment that people would make with Savvy Sisterhood Circle. There, it is a payment. There is a payment required. Although we have shared lots of free resources, this is a free resource. You can have this recording and reference it. We've dropped gems throughout, hopefully, that are useful to you. In addition, there's another one that we, a live we did or a recording we did in December that I shared in the chat as well on how to negotiate. We gave a lot of tips on how to self-advocate, mm -hmm. how to negotiate. We spoke to the need for that, the fear around that today. And so coming into the circle, we would work with you specifically on how to do that. If you invest, you have different payment options. You can pay in installments or you can pay all at once. Just scan the QR code. We'll start the week of January 22nd. We'll begin our meetings around this time and we'll go deep. That's what Natalie and I do. I love that. You shared, Elena, that you understood the why with the where, like why I'm going where I want to go. That's that's everything. Mm -hmm. We want to get aligned with our why. Subject matter experts like Simon Sinek talks about that's mm -hmm. everything. As a leader, as a human, you have to know your why. You have to know and your you, why. 
you know, you'll, if you don't know it coming into the circle, you will definitely know it very soon within it. The very clarity, soon. I want to say so many, so, yes. we didn't even speak to all the things, the clarity, the confidence yes. building, the validation, the um, support, it being seen and heard. There's so many benefits. And we have, will have other resources as the weeks go on that we will be sharing other worksheets, other other links, other things that we have created or know about that you'll get as part of that container. So you're investing. And we have to say, this will be the cheapest it will ever be yeah. because we literally yes. like, <laughs> give away a lot for a little because we want to just still yes. get this going. It's our we inaugural. Yes. 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 So thank you all for showing up. We just want to wrap up. Is there any final words? Did, did we meet your intention? <laughs> That's my question that you wanted to, that you started out wanting to share. Are there any final tips that you want to share about anything that we touched on today that you want to leave people who will see this with? I think for me, ultimately, I'm usually tentative, hesitant to speak up in rooms or in rooms where I don't know um, people, but I think you people you lose you lose out and people lose out on the benefit of hearing your voice. So to me, I, I would say don't be don't be afraid to engage in a group conversation. Like you said, it's a safe space. Be share what's going on in your mind. You never know what you can walk away, but you never you'll never know if you don't speak up for it. So I think it's just don't be afraid to take the step. Take the invest in yourself. It's so important. It is because ultimately you're going to be the one that benefits from this. And it may seem a little daunting, but I, once you get into that, I think you'll you'll enjoy it immensely. So I would say just go for it. It's it's Thank very you. much worth the effort. Thank you, Thank you Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I would just say, Keyshawn um, and Natalie, one, thank you for the opportunity to speak to your guest. Um, for anyone considering, be open to the process. Oh be open to the process, bring your whole self into the coaching experience. And then at least at what I did was set intentional goals for what I expected to achieve. You'll definitely be able to realize them and then um, surround yourself with folks who are cheerleaders for you, who are willing to root for you when you're not in a room. Yay. And on that note. Yes, that's it. We're wrapping it up. Thank you all so much. Did you want to share anything, Natalie, before we wrap up one last thing or? And I just say, please, if you feel led by anything in our conversation, oh, thank you, Nicole. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> if you feel led, if you feel a spark, if you feel that little intuition going, let me do this, follow your guidance, ladies. Just follow. You will not be disappointed. That's right. That's right. And I'll leave you with a question. My question to you, to everyone who shows up is, do you currently have a success squad? Really? Do you have a success squad? Oh, and to thank you. Sorry, sorry, Shanini. Okay. Shanina. I'm we so will, glad. We will, give, we will be sharing um, <laughs> a lot more feedback on the back end. Yes, you'll get an email from us with more details. Yes. Sorry. So do you have a success squad already? If you do not, and I'll say you don't have one if you are within community with people where you feel something is off, something is dissonant, something is discordant, something feels imbalanced, or you just leave it feeling like something's missing. If you feel any of those things, I would say you don't have a success squad. In this experience, we seek to provide you with that. You will be able to go on and model this in other realms of uh, spheres of influence that you enter. That is the goal. Get it here. Get it now. <laughs> make it real for yourself, invest in yourself, and then take that outwards into the other skills, influence and expertise and all the ways in which you were built and made and designed to impact the world. Do that. Do that with this in mind and with this experience in your heart. So that's it. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. See you Thank soon. you for having us. You're wonderful. Thank you. We couldn't have said anything that you said better. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.